What's going on Warriors? Happy New Year. We made it. We did it. We made it into 2020. You believe it? It's been a decade. Massive ye um, 10 years of just growth. Um, even 2019 itself. That year put a lot on me. But I just smashed through every trial. Smashed through every single um, adversity that tried to put itself in my path. I just absolutely just cut down anything that obstructed me. It's great, man. I, I enjoyed it. Even the bad moments. I won't give none of it back. Because I loved every single one. Every single trial. Bit of adversity that tested me. Even the sorrow. Even the pain. Won't give it back. You know, because it, it makes you who and what you are today. You know, and I feel like those situations that I've been through those experiences they've just added to make me more you know and I'm the type of person that situations make me stronger and a better person I won't break no matter what happens I won't allow the world and situations to break me yeah so yes enough of that now we're going to get on to the real reason why you're here. My top 10 of 2009 to 2019. Yes, this is my decade top 10 best games of the last 10 years. And I'm going to do the best game of 2019. Okay, so I'll tell you what. First of all, let's do my the best game of 2019. Now that is a hard one. That is ridiculously hard, yeah? But for me personally, the best game of 2019 is Dead Cry 5. Three! There's, for me, there is literally... There, there is competition. There's a lot of competition. But for me, Dead May Cry 5, that game was my dream game. you got to understand, I love me some Devil May Cry, right? And to get a Devil May Cry 5 with story, godlike characters in um, Nicole, Nero, I cannot believe it. I'm saying Nero is a godlike character, godlike. You have um, Lady, you have Trish. You have Virgil, who's actually a bona fide character in the game. Even though he came late into the game, he actually gave a lot to the game. You know, in terms of the story, in terms of dialogue, in terms of everything. You know, it's absolutely amazing. Like, that game, the stages, the combat, the cutscenes, the graphics, the music, the boss fights... Man, that game is absolutely incredible. I love Devil May Cry 5. And that is my um, number one game of 2019. So yes, now we're going to talk about my top 10 video games of the last 10 years. Now, it was pretty easy to make this top 10. The hard thing about making this top 10 was... The order, the order is very, very difficult. But I feel like I've done it justice. I mean, the top five, easy. The order, difficult. All right, so let's get to it. Number 10, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. Godlike game. Dungeon, world exploration, fighting ghosts. Fighting demons, fighting monsters, fighting ogres, fighting cyclopses, fighting wyverns, um, discovering destiny, godlike story, open world, weapons, fighting bandits, uncovering conspiracies. Unbelievable game. Good story, good graphics. Good online component where you could actually make like a, a partner for yourself that would join you in combat. And then other people around the world, they could download your 
partner, yeah, like your pawn, and they could have that pawn aid them in battle. And then if that if your pawn performed well, or if you had a strong pawn, you made a strong pawn with good stats and good weapons and everything like that, and good equipment, then the people that would use it would give that pawn rewards, like they would give it an item or something good, and then you would get it. You know, and the pawn would just get experience from fighting while you're asleep or whether you're doing whatever or you're not playing the game or you are playing the game and then you go to you actually sleep in the game and then you wake up and your pawn will say i've gone on a i went on a mission and this is what i got man that game is really good man i love that game and that game is my number 10 number nine <laughs> watch dogs 2 a godlike game i love that game marcus hallway godlike character the music the, another good thing about the same thing like Jackal's Dogma, open world, but well done, open world. In terms of there's always something to do in that open world. It's not like it's just a massive open space with only little patches that get used for the actual story and certain side quests. No, there's a lot of things to do. You'll go from Everywhere, there was always an adventure, there was always a story, there was always a use for a building, or a crane that you could hack, or a car that you could break into, or a bike you could steal, or a building you'd go into, or a facility you'd have to infiltrate, infiltrate. and there was a lot of ways to, um, there was a lot of ways to interact with certain, um, environments. Interact with certain environments, which I really liked. When you're doing a mission, you can uh, you can uh, approach a mission stealth, or you could go in guns blazing, or you could go in without being seen at all, or you could do it without actually even going into the facility or the mission area, just using your gadgets. Like you could be using like your um, your drone, or you could be using like your little it's like a miniature um, buggy. That could go throughout the whole area and um, steal information because it has like a USB kind of like port to download information, getting past enemies, creating distractions, stunning enemies. So good. So good. I love that game. I love that game. The story, there was a lot of story in that game, a lot of side missions, a lot of cool weapons, a lot of amazing cool characters. I love that game. That game, why that game is my, that is why that game is my number nine. Number eight. Red Dead Redemption 2. Now that game is godlike. Really, really good game. I enjoyed it. The story of that game, very interesting. I like the way you have to, you actually have a group of people that you travel with. And you have to maintain your whole community by the exploits that you're doing around the world. Be it you be a good guy that just helps people and you're always getting money and then giving it to the camp. So that the camp can always buy resources, food, um, meat, resources, equipment, ammunition, munitions, stock, all that type of good stuff. Or whether you're going to be a bad guy that just robs a lot of people and just kills and is an outlaw all over the place. And you don't really give back to your whole community, which means people in your, commu your, your community, your camp die because they're not eating or they don't have enough resources. You can play the game how you want to and you could do hunting. It's like a really interesting thing. The main character, Arthur, he was actually a real cool dude, man. You know, the world was a really massive open world and there was a lot to do in the open world. A lot to do. You know, so for me, that game is really cool. And that game is my number eight. Number seven. Yeah. Resident Evil 2. Now, Resident Evil 2, one of my all-time favourite games. This is the original one of, Resident, of uh, PS, PS2. Yeah. One of my all-time favourites. I didn't want Capcom to touch that game. Because that game is so iconic and so godlike to me. I don't want them to ruin it. Right now, they made this Resident Evil 2 for the PS4 
I think it's out for the PC and it's out for the is it out for the Xbox well whatever it's out on yeah Resident Evil 2 god like game absolutely god like the story the way they added from the original game they've added a, they've added a lot of new cutscenes a lot of character development but it was done really well really really good um Weapons are cool, characters are cool, the actual depth into the events of what happened in Raccoon City with Umbrella and Leon and Claire and everything that happened within the Resident Evil universe documented and explained and displayed wonderfully. They didn't let me down and the graphics stopped. The only thing I didn't like about that game is um, Tyrant. Like I'd be enjoying the game doing exploration, looking about the world, finding documents, reading documents about people, survivors in Raccoon City, seeing where they are, what is going on, what happened during the outbreak because people write diaries, or write information, and all you hear is like the music will just hit, and then and then um, Tyrell will just walk through the door, and he just disrupt the whole flow of the game. For me, I didn't like him. I didn't like him at all, right? And I finished the game. I've got everything, like all the hidden stuff and everything. So I've got like the infinite guns and everything like that. But I don't want to use them. But when Tyrant is there, I feel like I have to use it because I want him dead and gone so I can go about my business. But that's the only thing I didn't like about the game. Everything else, absolutely amazing. So that was my number seven. Uh, my number six is uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for the Switch unbelievable game the characters that you've got in that game because you've got so many different characters in that game beings called blades and they're like summons that live with you they're like living being living entities and they fight alongside you right and then you give them your power and then they can fight with you or for you but you're going to be strong anyway so you're always going to fight but only selected chosen people can wield blades but the game that doesn't do it justice to explain the game man this, as, to me you have to play it it's a massive open world it's a proper anime game yeah but it's a high quality anime game absolutely godlike anime game you got xenoblade chronicles 2 yeah, absolutely godlike open world RPG, brilliant story, godlike exploration, um, awesome side quests, wonderful characters, um, like the combat and um, fighting style in that game, top top quality, absolutely godlike game. Yeah, so we have that right. Um, my number, where are we? We're on number five. Number five, Mass Effect Two. What can I say about Mass Effect Two? That is the game that it changed my whole perspective on storytelling in video games i love that game the music the world uh, the weapons the fighting the adventure the sense of purpose going on missions um made you feel when you're helping your crew garrus Liara, everybody, you know, I don't even know what to say about that game, Shepard was a good character, he was actually, the main character was actually a good, bloody character, man, that game was deep, such a deep game, Mass Effect 2, like, they will, I don't feel like they will ever, well, they actually did, but it's a different company, but we'll get onto that. Right, but at the time, I didn't feel like they'd ever make a game that could rival that level of storytelling. And I could, I would say that there's only maybe three or four games since that have rivaled the storytelling and the scale, the scope and scale of Mass Effect Two. That game was godlike, absolutely wonderful game. I love that game, and that game absolutely number five. All right. So, number four, that is going to be 
Xenoblade Chronicles 1. God-like game. Absolute, basically the same thing like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Except Xenoblade Chronicles... I felt like it had a... I don't want to say a deeper story. But it was it was hella deep. It was an early game. It was one of the early um, games of the generation because it came out, I think, 2010. Yeah, so it was like early, early in the turn of the, gener of the, the decade. What an incredible, magical game, man. Like, for me, mainly the main thing I like about that game was the story. The story and the world and the pacing of the adventure. Right, in terms of going to this area, to that area, fighting against monsters, fighting against beasts, uh, coming up against a boss, a boss setting you back, you having to like backtrack and then do some mad missions because they've set you to some mad dungeon, you have to go through like mad adventures, godlike game. Godlike game, that's definitely a game that I would recommend even to this day and it's also going to be releasing a version of Xenoblade. Uh, Chronicles on the Switch. Number three, Monster Hunter World slash Monster Hunter World Iceborne. They're all the same thing. Yeah. What a game. Now, particularly, I wouldn't say that game is a main story game, but it is, the story is good. The story is good. They put a lot of work into the cutscenes, a lot of work into the uh, presentation of the story, which is a, it's a compelling story, right? Ain't gonna win no awards, ain't no Mass Effect level story, Mass Effect um, 1 and 2 level story, or Red Dead Redemption, or Dragon's Dogma, but the story is good. But the main thing in that game is the hunts. When you're hunting monsters, you're hunting and you're um, getting equipment. You use them there. When you beat the monsters, you get materials from them and you make new armor. And then you can create new builds of your of um, of your character. You know, if you say you, I want my character to do more critical damage, right? And have higher defense. And then when I um, hit a weak point, I do like increased damage. You can create a character that is dedicated to that build right that that level of play or if you say you want your character to their weapon to be super sharp so if your weapon is super sharp you're always going to be doing consistent damage and you're just going to be like doing maximum damage as well maximum damage your, your weapon is not going to like keep on bouncing off certain enemies because certain enemies have got a level of armor and if you have high level sharpness you can cut through that armor you know, so you can have that and then you can have your character with super high attack power. And let's say you're fighting against an enemy that is fire. So you want to make your char your character high fire resistance. Then you can make and build that. And that's what that game is really. And it's playing online with people, with a team of um, and four people in total, including yourself, four. Right, and you go online and just hunt, hunt monsters and get equipment to make new armor, a new sword. Um, how you got like a house? You can make your house, decorate your house, what type of good stuff? So that game is godlike, man. That's definitely a, an awesome game, and that is why that game is my number. Is not my number three. All right, number two, Witcher Three. Now that game, it didn't have. A good combat system at all but the story 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 the story in that game is unbelievable and the characters the main thing about that whole game was the characters man Geralt Cyrilla Triss Yennefer, um, Dandelion, you had so many characters, so many characters are missing, man, but that game was unbelievable, I was about to name characters from um, Witcher 2, right, but I can't remember what characters are from Witcher 2, what characters were in Witcher 3, right, because I haven't played Witcher in like a long time, 
and um yeah witcher 2 witcher 3 i played them very close to each other because just before witcher 3 came out i replayed uh, witcher 2 so a lot of it melds into each other but yeah witcher 3 unbelievable game it's the main thing is the story the story of the cutscenes, the adventure the missions that you do <coughs> the side quests the side quests feel like main parts of the actual story because it all it all leans towards the main story like when you go across you'll be traveling across the world in some and you go into a remote forest in the middle of absolute nowhere and the cutscene will happen and then somebody's in the forest, a person will say, can you take me and can you help me and escort me back to my village, right? Because um, they were trying to get some um, herbs in a forest and they were attack attacked by some a monster or something like that. Like by a monster or a demon or whatever, right? And then you fight those those monsters, you help the guy and if you decide to take him back, you take him back to the, um, to the actual, his village. When you go back to his village... A cutscene will happen, right? And then people say, well, there is such a thing happening in our area, right? But it was from um, a tower that was by some um, devil worshippers. And we don't know what's happening, but there is um, an evil um, presence that is there and it is affecting the village and the area around it. You go there and it turns out to be like some massive three hour story. And it was like in the middle of nowhere with no instruction that that was even going on there or there's anything going on. Just You've just embarked on with, and it's got cutscenes and music and uh, interesting characters and dialogue. And you're like, what is this? This isn't main story. But then the events that happens in it leans towards the whole lore the whole storytelling of the witcher universe man witcher 3 mate my number two absolute god like game i cannot even that game would be my number one if it wasn't for the game that i'm about to tell you which is number one and my number one is it's very obvious devil may cry 5 that is my number one game of the last 10 years. Absolute gold. Devil May Cry 5, man, that's my dream. If I ever wished for a Devil May Cry game to be put into reality, Devil May Cry 5 is it. That game is just everything. It's everything I wanted and everything I needed that game to be. With the story, with the cutscenes, with the characters, with the dialogue, with the banter, with the weapons, with the monsters, with the um, level of um, customization to the combat, to the everything. The story, that game is just love. That game is the power of love that's what that game is the people that made that game it was like it's like a love letter to all the Devil May Cry fans yeah that stuck with Devil May Cry that wish for Devil May Cry to come back this is it and that is why this game Devil May Cry 5 DMCV DMC5 Devil May Cry 5 whatever you want to call it that is why this game is my number one game of the last decade so yeah that was it that was my top 10 um for the last 10 years and yeah i want to hear what you guys think and what you guys thought about my top 10 let me know in the comment section what your top 10 is that would be really really cool to see and know and then um, yeah we can go from there but this top 10 was actually really really hard right to actually to, to compile right because there's like there's like other really awesome games that I, I wanted to put in there right but I just couldn't you know because of the games that I did put in there and what they meant to me at the time right like I can give you an example I miss games like Street Fighter I miss games like Neo Automata uh, which I really wanted to put in there I miss games like uh, Bayonetta which is awesome Bayonetta 1 
which I really wanted to put in my top 10, right? But when I looked at it, and just the whole thing about making this top 10, there's certain games I couldn't put in there. I couldn't. These, this is my top 10, and I'm very happy with it. Right, so um, yeah, at the end of the day, two, best game of 2019, Devil May Cry 5. Best game of the last decade, Devil May Cry 5. So yeah, Warriors, that was me. Um, once again, Happy New Year. We did it, we made it until um, 2020. Let's see where this decade takes us. Let's get it. Let's see what happens. It's going to be an exciting time. But it's going to be a time where we have to... We have to work hard. We have to grind hard. No negativity. Do not let negativity affect you. Just push forward. The power of love. And positivity. That's it. That's what will take you... To the next level hard work love and positivity the three cornerstones of my at least my focus going forward so yeah warriors once again I want to say thank you take care stay blessed uh, thanks for sharing liking um, as, once again happy new year and um yeah, I'm gonna be doing more of this YouTube, gonna do, be doing more of my videos, I'm gonna be doing more reviews of like games. And um yeah, Warriors, I'm here. Alright, take care, later.